Hello and welcome to Church Unusual, where we have kingdom conversations on the issues of sonship. We are looking at Genesis chapter 3, where man fell. What did he fall from? From sonship to orphan. With me in studio. My name is Charles Opio. Welcome to Church Unusual. My name is Susan Opio, and we are looking at sonship. We've been looking at the cedars of Lebanon, and we've been saying there are principles that are hidden in creation that explain to us who we are in God. And God intended us to be sons. He wanted us to be sons. After fall, uh, uh, as a fallen man, mm. the easiest way is to look at creation. And of course, when you look at the book of Job, chapter 12, verse 7 to 9, it says, But now ask the beasts, mm -hmm. and they will teach you. Yes. Interesting. They yes. will teach you yeah. by ask, just looking at them. Ask, ask them. them. How do you ask them? Place a demand Inquire. that when I sit here, I look at them and say, I'm placing a demand. I want to look at this lion. I want to get something. Yes. Place a demand because I don't expect a lion to sit back and teach you and tell you <laughs> now, sit down, I teach you. Yes. Job is saying, look at a lion. Yes. Place a demand to understand the attributes there. And the birds of the air, and they will tell you. Mm -hmm. Or speak to the earth, and it will teach you. And the fish of the sea they will explain. I love the place of the fish. Yes. Because they explain to you and tell you, listen, by looking at us, you can tell who God is. You know, by looking yeah. at us, you can tell who a son should be. Yes. And it finishes then by saying, who among all this? And you know, when, you, when you take those classifications that Job gives us in terms of creation, yeah. each of those is a world. It is. In itself. Just talking about tell the beasts yes. to teach you. The, the, the beasts alone are a world. Yes. When you come now to birds, that's another, another world. whole world. Yeah. I mean, let's just take some of the things. Mm -hmm. Remember one time we were studying the sparrow. Yes. And how uh, the, the, the ones that fly uh, from, uh, are they sparrows? Are that fly across continents. If you see the size of that bird, and you see its migratory pattern, and you ask yourself, how does it even know when to fly south. <laughs> and where south is. And where south is. <laughs> there can only that be the means hand of God. In God that put GPS in oh the yes. bird before anybody ever created GPS. Yes. It can tell what south is. Mm. When you look at any of these animals, I mean, we live in a nation where we observe the wild beast migration. How do they know when to start? This is the time to start. Yes, and, and when to go back. And then they back. How do they know that? I mean, if you look at this thing yes, and ignore the fact that only God could have done Absolutely. this. Absolutely. Like the, the, like the book of Job is telling us, yeah. these beasts will teach us. They'll teach There's you There's something the wild things. beast migration will teach yes. us. Looking at um, Romans 1.20, for since the creation of the world, his invisible, his here is God. Yes. God's invisible attributes are clearly seen since the creation of the world. I like, I like that statement. Invisible attributes clearly seen that's not english okay do I say it again <laughs> <laughs> you know sometimes we read and we just go over let's do that yes. again yeah since the creation of the world yes. his invisible invisible attributes, attributes. are clearly seen mm. and how are they seen understood by the things that are made even his eternal power and godhead so that they are without excuse so the entire concept of how god created the power behind it can be decoded mm. from the things that have been created. Yes. We are able to look at what has been created and that's what we've been doing. Yeah. We've focused primarily on trees and we've been focusing on a particular tree, the cedar. The cedar of Lebanon. Yes. And of course we are getting it from Psalms 92 verse 12 yes. where it talks about the righteous, talking yes. about they will grow like yes. the cedars of Lebanon. Yes. Why cedars of Lebanon? We've looked at these principles and seen how the cedar of Lebanon grows on the mountain. It yes. grows 8,000 feet above sea level. Mm -hmm. The cedar of Lebanon, the roots go deep into the rock. Wow. We said that the sap does not allow rot or decay. Mm -hmm. And we are looking at the principles and asking ourselves, these are pictures, pictures yes. of what? Yes. And you know, now where we are, I think it's one of the most interesting. <laughs> it's so interesting yes. that if you look at the cedar of Lebanon, it grows, it actually lives up to a thousand years. Now think about this. Wow. Think about this. <laughs> Let's go back to some key uh, calculations. Yes. One, it tells us that it can grow to maturity for every, up, uh, by within 30 years. Yes. Okay? Mm. But we are told that it grows for every 10 feet. Up, 30 feet under. 30 feet under. Yes. So in terms of height, it even grows to 120. Yes. Okay? Mm. Within the 120, 
it can still live for a thousand years. Look at that. Really? That is something to say. Listen, in maturity, when you talk about a, a thousand years, you're not calculating from 19. So if I plant one from today, yes, 2019, it, will it be means here. Eh, which year will it be? A yes. thousand years. That's what we're yes. talking about. No, 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 Principles. No, no, no. What is a thousand years? When yes. you look at a thousand years and you look at the Bible to understand how a son should live up to a thousand years. We're not talking about a thousand. <laughs> now you're Physical. having, this is my birthday. Yeah. By the way, if you're a thousand years, who will attend your birthday? <laughs> <laughs> you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, all you the people you around alone. you have no clue. Yes. I mean, you're just here. Yeah. A thousand years in the Bible is very interesting. It has got many, many connotations. Yeah. But one of the basic ones, we'll get it from Second Peter 3.8. You know, because that's the best place to first. Whenever we want to con connote something, we have to see what are the parallels being given. Yes. Okay? Mm -hmm. In Second Peter, Peter says, for uh, with the Lord. With who? The Lord. With the Lord, <laughs> not with us. <laughs> with the Lord. With the Lord. Yes. A thousand years is as a day. A day. Mm. Okay? Now, this is interesting. Let's think about that very slowly, okay? A with day? The door, with the Lord, a day. So like in the Lord's day, the Lord's day is our, is thousand. our thousand years. Our thousand. Our thousand years is like? A day. That alone should cause us trouble. Where we sit and say, wait a minute. So when we talk of the day of the Lord. No, <laughs> let me put some humor. It's very dangerous to say you're waiting on the Lord. <laughs> because he's if one he day. If he says you're coming tomorrow. Oh, he's one day is your <laughs> thousand years. <laughs> so, so are some of the statements yeah. we make you which know, are not. I'm, I'm waiting for the Lord. No, the Lord are not day. sensible. Yes. Then God tells you, okay, don't worry, I'll come tomorrow. It's okay. Listen, it's a thousand Lord, years. A day. <laughs> <laughs> it's a thousand years. Before he ever arrives, mm. you will have problems. Mm. So what is the picture here? The picture here is that what God can accomplish in a day is like a thousand years. Mm. So when we say that the tree grows to a thousand years. It can live up to a thousand years. Yes. That's a cedar of Lebanon. It's a picture of just how much the Lord can accomplish with a son. Mm. Mm. He can do with a son in a day what, what men can do in a, in a thousand, thousand years. years. That's so actually the it's also another way of telling us, of listen, the earth. when you talk of the activities of God, you can't comprehend. You can't put You a cannot picture. comprehend the activities of God. Yes. But when we say that the cedars of Lebanon live up to a thousand years, yes. we are saying now let's look for a thousand years in the Bible. Interesting. One is in uh, Second Peter 3, 8 with the Lord, a day is like a thousand yes. years and a thousand years is uh, like a uh, day. Like a day. Now, le le let's do a little journey into Genesis and creation. When the Lord creates day one, day two, day three, we say, and the evening and the morning was, was a day. Day one. So that is the day of the Lord. You know, it's a day of the Lord working, not us. Yes. And uh, let me throw a few curves. We have a misunderstanding on the Sabbath. Hmm. Because when the Lord rested on the seventh day, but as a day unto the Lord is? A thousand years. So when did he rest? And how long uh, did he rest? I think it's just a matter of where we talked about being an orphan or a son. Yes. An orphan interprets the Bible. Completely wrong. Literally. Yes. They actually look at the earth and interpret the Bible. Yes. Not understanding a day. For example, in Genesis, when mm. you talk about in day one, he created the heavens and the earth. Yes. And it always talks about the evening wars and the, mo and the morning. Day one. Yes. Then it says in chapter so five even of God's Genesis. Day starts in the evening. Yes. <laughs> it says in Genesis, mm. and this is the genealogy of Adam. Yes. In the day. In the day. He created them, not in the days. Yes. You know? So there's so many languages. And then one of the things, as a science student, I love quantum physics, you know that, and all these things. But one of the things we were taught was that the, the earth rotates around the sun. And I know most of you, that's what you were taught. Hmm. I have a problem. Or a question. Yes. <laughs> In Genesis, the earth was created before the sun. In the beginning. God created the heavens and the earth. Mm -hmm. How can the earth rotate around something that had not been created by the time it was operational? If anything, I think the uh, sun came day four. Of God. Of God. To mark day one of the time. The earth was already there. Yes. So how can the earth be rotating around the sun? Of course, this is now what scientists told us. We need to look at so us. many concepts yeah. to require the position of the kingdom. Mm. That means, what does the earth operate on? The Bible tells us in Job, the earth hangs on nothing. 
Meaning that is a sun token. The earth is operated by God. He's not bound by other planets. That's the understanding of men. And of course, we come and say, Job, how many years ago he said the earth hangs on nothing? There you go. Yeah. So, and Job was talking about amazing things. He mm -hmm. talked about he, I think Job 26, 7, yeah. talks about he who stretched the north over the empty place mm -hmm. and hangs the earth on nothing. Mm. What is Job saying? Job is teaching us about creation. Job yes. is saying, today scientists confirm this. They say that the North Star is not really North. Yes. There's something called North and True North. Mm -hmm. Between the North Star in the galaxy, in yes. our galaxy, in our and environment, yes. there's a gap between the North Star and the Milky Way. Mm -hmm. So it says, he who stretches the North over the empty place mm. and hangs the earth on nothing. John is, Job is telling you stuff you don't study in school. This is before understanding of all these things. Thank you. And I think also when you look at Job, you're saying this is God showing you what sons can do yes. when they are connected to him because he's the one who created the earth. Yes. We should not be sitting and saying, you know what, I'm waiting for someone to discover. And talking of those kind of activities of sons, yes. this is where we are challenging the sons and saying, you know what, the... the, the uh, creation is waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. Of sons, yes. It is the sons of God who should be coming up with all these creative innovations. Yes. Why? Because when we tap into God, yep. He gives you a dimension of what to bring in the earth. But when it comes in the earth, we become a solution. In fact, yeah? let's look at some scriptures that mm -hmm. are just waking up our thinking. If if Job says that in his time, what is it connecting to a thousand days? A thousand years, a thousand, is, uh, a thousand years. Mm -hmm. It means Job in one day had revelation that took us a thousand years to find out. Oh yes, a day in the law of the Lord. Yes, it took a thousand years or more later yes. to find out that reality that he already knew. Mm. Okay? It also, look at jo Joshua uh, uh, when pursuing the giants, uh, the, the, the Canaanite, uh, what are they, the Amorites. Yes. In pursuing of the Amorites, the Bible says Joshua stopped the sun. Mm. So what is rotating around what? Mm. What was stopped? The earth wasn't stopped. The earth. It was the, the sun. sun stopped. The sun. Meaning, suns can do amazing things. Oh, I think these are examples of what the suns yes. can do. When we look at all these things, we see Elijah yep. moving from one place to the other. We see the um, guy who went for baptism. Yeah. What is his you know, name? I, 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 what is this? Uh, uh, Philip. Uh, Philip. Philip. You know? Who translates Translated. to meet the, the Ethiopian eunuch. Yes. And these things were normal. Why do I know normal? Obadiah meets Elijah, mm. and Elijah tells him, go and tell uh, Ahab that I will meet him today, and Elijah, Obadiah says, who? Me. I know Paraphrased. you. I know you. I know you. Today <laughs> you'll be here. Tomorrow the Spirit of the Lord will place you in another place. Wow. They were used to Elijah's movement. Sons of God transcend yes. time and space. Absolutely. Right now we are bound Obviously. by time and space. But we are saying when we arise and become the sons of God, like Elijah, moving from point A to point yes. B. Why? By the time a cedar lives a thousand years, yeah. what has it experienced and seen? Mm. It has transcended time yes. and space. Mm. It, if it was to talk to us. It will teach us a lot. Exactly. That's lot. the principle here. Mm. It lives to be a thousand years. Mm -hmm. It means sons should operate with the knowledge as if they've been around for a thousand years. That is what we are tapping from Yet God. We are, th that's why John says in Revelation, I was in the spirit on, in the, the, Lord. on the day of the of Lord. The Lord. Yeah. In the day. day. What did he see? things yes. that we are still trying we to understand today. Them. We have not been able to unlock. That's the principle. That's there. the power of a son. That's the principle of a thousand. So when we're talking about sons with that capacity, John, yes. Elijah, and all these people, and we look at ourselves today, reaching a place where somebody tells you, who is your father? When you talk about God as your father, and you're talking to a son, and the first thing you tell them, who is your father? And yes. the first thing they go is, hmm? my father. <laughs> That's not what we're talking about. Wrong. What's your yes. name? Hmm? My name. <laughs> uh, where do you go to church? Hmm? Where I go to church? Listen, <laughs> that's not the language of sons of God. We are talking about people who have the ability to transcend time yes. and space. Yes. People with the ability to go into the heart of God and bring solutions that will change our environment. Let's take Daniel. Daniel interprets a dream, gives Nebuchadnezzar history that hmm. spans over a thousand years. Yes. Tells us of generations and gener some of the things are still coming. Mm. 
Some have come and have gone. Yes. Talks of every king. Mm. That's the positioning. That's being above the clouds, as we've spoken about. Wow. That's piercing heaven, mm. getting insight, yes. giving us history so we can plan around it. Mm. Right now, we are busy running helter skelter. Every new thing, we are wondering what is going to happen next. The church is always chasing technology. Instead of leading it. Instead of leading. That's a problem. The sons are always behind, trying to understand and comprehend what is AI. And every time we hear <laughs> this is AI, we are thinking the devil. 666. Yes. This is a scam. Here, here is, here is um, Joseph. Yeah. Joseph interprets a dream that spans 14 years. Mm. Seven years of plenty, seven years of famine. Mm. But the dream is not important to interpret without a strategy. Joseph not only can tell the dream, yeah. but can implement the strategy. Mm. By the time he goes before Pharaoh, he doesn't just implement the dream. You see, most of us say, Joseph interpreted the dream. No, 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 no. no, no. Joseph interpreted the dream and told Pharaoh what to do about it. So it's not just about, I saw, the Lord is telling me that. Something gray, something, something brown, you know? something, God is not colorblind. I have the solution. He knows exactly what you can see. And as a son of God, yes. I've seen, I have the solution. Yes. I'm not just speaking. Yes. And you know the interesting thing with all these sons of God we see, the patriarchs, they lived their life. If you asked Joseph, he was not writing no. Genesis. He was just living. He was not writing chapters of the Bible. Yep. He was just living. But yep. his life became pattern for us. Yes. It became a template yeah. where if I want to see how God can take you yes. from a place with a dream, when he gives you a dream, mm. he showing you, do you want to live the dream of God in the earth? Yes. Look at the life of Joseph. Now, can you imagine two pictures? Yeah. Longevity without God is a waste of time. It is. Okay? Yeah. To prove this, we're going to look at the man who lived the longest mm. in the earth. His name was Methuselah. Yep. Methuselah lived 969 years. He almost entered the day of the Lord, mm. a thousand. Mm. That's a man who lived the, the longest. Methuselah, the man who lived the longest, mm. with probably the longest name in the Bible, yeah. Methuselah, yeah. only has two lines to his name. Methuselah. And Methuselah lived. Begot. Yes. <laughs> 969 years. And begot Enoch. Period. And, uh, well, <laughs> let's also look at him from another perspective. <laughs> because when you talk of Methuselah, yes, he lived. And you know what? Coming from a place of fallen position, yes. the fallen man cannot enter the day of the Lord. Yes. It has to be a man who has been redeemed, yes. restored to sonship. Absolutely. So Methuselah was short of the day of the Lord. Yeah. But yes, he gave birth to Enoch. Yes. But we all know. Now, Enoch, Enoch. was not like his father. <laughs> he was. That's and a he was not. The Bible says Enoch did something. Yeah. And, and I like numbers in the Bible. Bible says an Enoch the seventh from God. Mm. Seven is a number of perfection. Yeah. Seven is a from window, Adam. it's a picture. From Adam, yes. he's the seventh. So now we see the Bible says an Enoch walked with God and was not, for God took him. We don't even have his dating, we don't have his timing. Mm. You know, all sorts of mystical mysteries have been created. And for those of you who've been reading the book of Enoch, there's no such book. <laughs> Let's start there. Because Enoch did not write any book. Literacy had not been invented, and therefore there was nothing. Literacy was invented in the time of Egypt, in the time of Moses. So the first written order in the earth was written in Moses' day. Mm. So there's no such thing as the book of Enoch. Enoch. So the writer of the book is someone who is just trying to comprehend and looking understand for gaps in the Bible what to create kind of mysticism. a man was this. No, looking for gaps in the Bible to create mysticism. I like that. You understand? Looking for gaps. Yeah, because, there is, no yeah, because there is no recorded order. I mean, if you're taking Adam and you go all the way. Now, let me explain something. The, the, the order in which we are taught about the Adam, Seth, and everybody else, mm -hmm. and the years they live, need to be graphically arranged that some of their years overlapped. Mm. Oh, yes. Are we together? Oh, yes. We kind of, we kind of think Each Adam lived. lived to this, died, <laughs> and yeah, then, then the other one lived from here, died. <laughs> no, no, no. These guys overlapped and saw each other. Yes. That's there true. are people who lived in the same window of time oh, with yes. each other. Yeah. So it's very, very likely that Methuselah saw many other people. Oh, yes, with his 900 years. Absolutely. He went through. Yes. yes. He may have met Seth, mm -hmm. for all we know. Yes. At the time he was born. Mm. So we must understand it in that order. Yeah. 
that because of that, that's why we know, for example, that what happens in the Tower of Babel was raised by Nimrod because historically Nimrod is a grandson of one of Ab uh, Noah's people. Yes. So you can connect. You mm. can tell this was a grandson of this one, and therefore he lived in this time, and therefore he existed. And also God needed the lineage that he was using, because yes. that's what he highlights in the Bible. Absolutely. He needed that lineage taught. Yes. So Methuselah could have been the teacher of many in Absolutely. that season. Enoch is gone. Yes. So you need the continuation. Yes. So Methuselah is here. Yeah. 969 years, Absolutely. short of the day of the Lord. Why we know there was no book of Enoch? is because none of the patriarchs quoted it. Mm. Everybody, I mean, uh, Daniel quotes Jeremiah. Yeah. You know, mm. uh, we are told there are books like the book of Jasha, which yeah. is found by the Hebrews. Yeah. But we need to be very careful that what we call the canon of the Bible is, con is saved to one thing. Jesus said, I come in the volume of the book, for it was written about me. Mm. So anything that does not point to him, mm is out of order. And I, and I, yes, okay. Number two, anything he did not quote from is not inspired. Easy to note. Simple. He Jesus quoted, quoted from, from Genesis to Malachi. Mm. That's yeah. an easy way to structure yeah. what is in the Bible mm. and what is not. So when we talk of Enoch, we should look at him from this um, generation of people yes. who are able to walk with God yes. such that the natural cannot hold them. Absolutely they get into immortality. Absolutely. So a generation is coming that yes. will walk into it, immortality. Yes. Yeah. And I think it's important because we're talking about Methuselah, we're talking about time, and we're talking about trees. And Enoch is a picture, mm -hmm. okay, yes. of a tree. Yeah. But let's put him in context. In Jude, you find him. Yes. All right? Mm -hmm. You find the mention of Jude. And this is interesting because Jude is Jesus' brother. So obviously Jesus gave him some insights oh. that are amazing because you find out some powerful things there. Yes. But in Jude, Jude talks about Enoch prophesied. So there is an oral tradition of what Enoch prophesied. Yeah. Enoch prophesied of the saints, of the coming of the saints, mm. the Lord returning with power. He saw the end. He saw the end of this journey. He completed it. Mm. That's why the earth could not hold him anymore. He has already seen. He lived beyond time. Beyond his time. And I think what yes. you're saying is, Enoch has the ability to see into God and see where this journey is ending. Absolutely. So sons of God, that's a picture of us. Yes. We should be able to go into God and see the destination. Absolutely. Of course, the destination is Christ. Yes. You know, the destination is God. Yep. But we are able to go in and like Enoch, to see yes. a saint, a generation that will be yes. standing and saying, you know what, this is the dwelling place of God. Absolutely. Men become And, and really, we should not belabor him because there are words there that we are not yet ready to decode. God hasn't given us the key. Yeah. It says Enoch was not. There's no such word. <laughs> Enoch was just not. Not. For God took him. In other words, one minute Enoch, another minute no Enoch. Gone. We and he goes into this dimension where our naked about. eyes, our natural eyes are not able to comprehend. Yes. So he got into this level with God. When, when man sees God, he cannot live. It doesn't mean he dies. No. You can't live in the natural. You're beyond it. You're beyond the natural. Absolutely. So what did he do? He walked with God. Yes. He saw dimensions of God which made the natural not yes. be able to hold him. Absolutely. And he just went there into a new go. dimension. Yes. But this is the generation we are talking about. The generation that will walk in immortality. That's the generation it. that will not die. The generation that That's will look. That's the picture of Enoch. Yes. And they will look and say, death, where is your sting? Absolutely. Because where we have reached, death faces you on the eyes and you know what? You can Ask death. For we shall be like him. Like him. Yes. That's the ultimate. That's where we are going to. That's the fullness of the stature of the image of Christ. And this is the sonship you're talking about. This Absolutely. is what you're talking about, cedars of Lebanon. Looking at cedars of Lebanon and saying, you know what? We started from a position that says they grow 8,000 feet above sea level. So yes. we are saying they have already gone from the ground. Absolutely. But we are ending on a place of they live up to a thousand years. They are just going to the day of the Lord. Yep. But you know what? Like Methuselah, from a fallen position, you just come close to the day of the Lord. You cannot enter. Only sons enter into the day of the Lord. This is Church Anisio. Keep <laughs> tracking. <laughs>